I'm very pleased to say that joining us tonight, live in studio here for the interview, is Bill Weld, Libertarian candidate for vice president this year. Governor Weld, thank you so much for thank being here. Thank you so really much. Nice Great to, to be here. here. Thank you. Um, I posited just a moment ago before the commercial break that what you and Gary Johnson are really aiming at this year is that 5% threshold to try to get some federal matching funds to try to get ballot access and all those other things basically so the libertarians might be viable in the future Is I think in the, real, in the real world that's probably uh, that's probably correct that would give uh, federal matching funds it would mean no more ballot access woes uh, you know we thought for the longest time we might have a chance to run the table because we're such nice guys and centrist party etc uh, but not getting in the debates uh, really uh, sort of foreclosed that option so now it is the 5%. You're right. And when you, in, in the real world, when you think about trying, pursuing that 5% option, um, for people who are in states where it's really close, for people who are in North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Florida, Ohio, these states where the presidential race really might be decided among the, the two candidates who do actually have a shot at it, do you think that people in those states should vote for you? Well, we are uh, making our case that we're fiscally responsible and, and uh, socially inclusive and welcoming, and we think we've got, uh, on the merits, the best, the best ticket of the three parties, if you will. Uh, and so, you know, we, we, we'd like to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, as I think you're aware, I see a big difference between the, the R candidate and the D candidate, and I've been at some pains to say that uh, I fear for the country if Mr. Trump should be elected. Uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's a candidacy without any parallel uh, that I can recall. It's uh, content free and uh, very much given to stirring up uh, envy and resentment and even hatred. Uh, and it's, um, I think it would be a threat to the conduct of our uh, uh, foreign policy and our position in the world at large. When you say fear for the country, do you do you is, are, is that hyperbole or do you mean it literally? Do you think it would actually be a threat to us as a country? Well, I think it would be a threat to our polity, uh, as, as Tom Brokaw has been saying the last couple of days. You know, we're getting to the point where we're, uh, we're impinging on democratic institutions in this country. And I think, uh, you know, it, it, it takes a certain, uh, not suspension of disbelief, but a, a willingness to go along with other people to get the ship of state going forward, I'm not sure that happens in a Trump presidency, frankly. You've described him as um, unstable. Did you mean that sort of psychologically? Or oh, how, yeah. what, what's, what's the basis of that? No, I mean that, I mean that psychologically. I, I, I think he showed in the debates that when he encounters a criticism or challenge, uh, he uh, behaves the way uh, you know, a bully would. He just doesn't take it well. He doesn't deal well with criticism and blame. Uh, and I don't think he could uh, competently manage the office of the presidency, given the, uh, the criticism and the challenge that you face every single day as president of the United States. He just would not be uh, in his uh, element, and, and I think he would wobble off course. And I think the country just can't have that. Given, given that, um, I'm just going to circle back to the question that I asked before. Um, Somebody listening to you right now in North Carolina, knowing that North Carolina may decide who the next president of the United States is, hearing you in terms of what you think about Donald Trump and him being uh, that, that you fear for the country if he is elected, why wouldn't it be, if, if those are the stakes and that person is deciding, well, I'm going to vote against Donald Trump, and you can see basically that you're not going to win, the, you and Gary Johnson are not going to win the presidency, why would that person not weigh threat to the country, fear for the fate of the country, against hope the Libertarian Party gets its 5% this year. Why would a person pick the Libertarian vote in that case if the, if the stakes are that high well, between voting for Clinton and Trump? The, the, the person could very well decide not to do that. And, and for someone deciding uh, not to do that, I have a lot to say about Mrs. Clinton that uh, has not been said by others mm. uh, recently and that I think uh, needs to be said. I mean, I've known her for 40 years. I worked with her. I know her well professionally. I know her well personally. I know her to be uh, uh, a person of high moral character, uh, a reliable person, uh, and uh, an honest person. Uh, however so much uh, Mr. Trump may rant and rave uh, to the contrary. So I I'm happy to say that and people can make their own uh, choices. I feel like you're, you're butting up against a gossamer ceiling here, a very, um, in that you're, I mean, you're not getting, you're not quitting, you're not stepping out of the race, 
Um, I heard you say today on MSNBC that you'll cast a vote for the libertarian ticket on which you are that part. That would be our ticket. That would be your ticket. <laughs> You're in Gary Johnson's ticket. But do you honestly mm -hmm. believe that Gary Johnson would be a better president than Hillary Clinton? I, I think he'd be capable of being a good chief executive and, and yes, a commander in chief, Aleppo to the contrary notwithstanding. Uh, he was a strong governor, and uh, you know I, I believe in the platform of the Libertarian Party, which is different from that of the other two parties. And, and I believe that it would be good for the country if the Libertarians were had a seat at the table to speak truth to power of the other two parties, which now have this monopoly uh, in Washington. Having said that, I'm not taking back anything I said about the massive difference between the two establishment party candidates. One would be chaos for the country, I think, and, and mm -hmm. the other would be a very uh, uh, business-like and, and capable and competent uh, approach to our affairs. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.